Okay, we're on to the second problem. I'm excited because the first problem wasn't too bad. Okay, let a and b be numbers such that the absolute value of a minus b is less than or equal to 1. We want to prove that the absolute value of a is less than or equal to the absolute value of b plus 1. What happens if we use the same strategy because that's the only thing I know. If we split this, because we want it to be less than 1, which also means that we want a minus b to be between 1 and negative 1, because all those values would be, the absolute value of all those values would be less than or equal to 1, right? But we want to prove that the absolute value of a is less than the absolute value of b plus 1. Um, we want to get this thing up here. And that ain't looking like it. Okay, if we reverse engineer that thing up there, then we get a less than or equal to the absolute value of b plus 1, which is greater than or equal to absolute value of b. Negative absolute value of b plus 1, um, which is negative absolute value of b minus 1, which is less than or equal to a, which is less than or equal to absolute value of b plus 1. Okay, so this is kind of what we want to show. And we can reverse engineer it to get to that. So above it, uh, we're kind of... The logic is really confusing me. Oh, okay, so B is always positive. So technically, yes, let me delete this line. We can make B always positive, right? But then on the left side, we can make it the negative version of the always positive B, which would be the same as just minus b when b is positive, right? Yeah. Uh, then we get negative 1 minus... That's looking a lot like... Yep. And then that's... a is less than or equal to absolute value of b plus 1, which is greater than or equal to the negative of the absolute value of b plus 1, which implies that the absolute value of a is less than or equal to the absolute value of b plus 1. And that's kind of the end of the proof, although I'm just going to double check my logic around this part see if that actually works. Can you, so look, this is what this intermediary step is. We added B to both sides, right? If B is positive, then that would be plus B. If B is negative, well then that would be 1 minus the absolute value of b, that would be negative 1 minus the absolute value of b. Mm. I don't see how that logic checks out. I don't think we can do that. 
how do we fix it because it's on the right track okay I figured out the way to solve this issue here so our issue up at the top here was that if we have a negative B we go negative absolute value of B we'd have to do negative absolute value of B to keep the same um, B's right otherwise we're that that B doesn't equal that B right so it would have to be minus and minus on both sides and we can't change it to a plus to fit this thing so we're gonna keep the plus on the right side but the left side what you can notice in fact is that this is the same as negative 1 plus the absolute value of B right that does make sense but that's also greater than negative 1 minus the absolute value of B right obviously adding adding B is going to be greater than subtracting it all right so that simplifies down to that and we can get rid of this right and then that implies this um, that the absolute value of a is less than or equal to the absolute value of b plus one so yeah that's how I would do it you can go check out the math sorcerer's video as well I think it's a different method from what I saw um, I'll go check that out and maybe leave some notes